wishing you a very happy new year. Let's wait for this virus situation to crystallize so we can meet again. Enjoy our latest video on Swarovski crystals, a little bit of Alexander McQueen, and of course, me and Peter. Daniel Swarovski developed technique of precision grinding and polishing hundreds of paste stones in one process thanks to the advancement of hydroelectric power. Swarovski painted the process of applying these crystal beads onto fabric in 1920s, an effect eagerly appropriated by designers such as Schiaparelli and Chanel in an era that celebrated the highly embellished knee-length evening Here dress. Brilliant! It's quite... Um, I like the use of pink and red as well. Classic looking. <laughs> Not so shocking. I mean, actually, there's a pink red. It, it works well. That well, color looks well. You could introduce like that color, you know. It's <laughs> slightly more sort of red and pink. It's yeah. picking up on the, the crystal. But this, in fact, is Chantilly lace that's then beaded. Mm. And, and um, crystal. But this is like almost sequin embroidery on it. Yeah. It's like it? a honeycomb effect. Yes. And then you've got the, the crystal tulle, which is more sort of contrasting, translucent. Use this color a lot, this Bois de Rose. It's probably your signature color. You know, like uh, Omani has that dusty Nile. Uh, but, uh, this is this is your color. I would naturally You're be drawn, drawn towards to it. it. Yeah. And these Tiff. ones are these ones definitely are different sizes. They're, they're the Swarovski elements, and they they glue on with heat. And you've got three different sizes and scattered at random, not regularly. And it covers very well because you see the three shapes really do give it a different dimension, different feel, well covered. It doesn't have to be totally covered to be yes. successful. Because I feel you don't want it as embellished as Hollywood glamour. But, <laughs> uh. You wouldn't be able to wear it. Great for yeah. photo studios or a couple of shots in a movie. Not That's practical, and they've been sewn into those dresses. <laughs> Actually, some brides, I think, you know, occasionally are locked into their dresses. A bit terrible. But even the other crystal dress, you couldn't, you wouldn't mm. be able to put a zipper in, I don't think. I think it would probably be a back centre fastening of some sort, or quite low back as well. So just, yeah, this one's for you now. The lock is in the waist and just below the waist. So you can get into the dress and step into it. Uh, uh, the Swarovski are there as well, and faceted crystal with slightly, slightly iridescent rhinestone feel to them. Rhinestone crystal beads. And there's also just, just this different shapes in there. It's very, very delicate. And here we go into the skirt, but we're talking about how Alexander McQueen called his 2009 collection, which is natural distinction, unnatural selection. Quite a complex um, sort of concept. Yes, but it sort of plays out now where... It does, where we are in a, a very strange situation this year. And uh, the texture of the fabric is more it's, it's sort of natural, but unnatural at the same time. Mm. The designer created crop dresses cut like the carapace of a beetle. The surface a mosaic of black faceted Swarovski crystal. Alexander McQueen explained that he had been pondering Charles Darwin, the survival of the fittest. Catwalk might be over, but his vision has never been more relevant. It would make a, a fabulous winter wedding dress when when it can happen. <laughs> when it spring, can happen, <laughs> spring wedding dress. We're hoping, sort of, the solstice wedding dress.